you. <coughs> right, so today we are talking about multi-dimensional databases and uh, my premise for coming here was that I'm assuming most of you know about databases. So this, uh, this slide won't go into details of basic relational database, but we'll uh, start from the multi-dimensions. Introductions first, I've been a developer for 20 years um, and I'm currently working as a development team lead uh, at Lookers PLC. Lookers PLC, you might, you guys might not know, but they are very much in the Northeast. Uh, all the Audi franchises, all the Nissan franchises, um, all the VW franchises, they are all owned by Lookers PLC uh, in the Northeast and we've got about uh, 200 franchise dealerships across the across the country and we can estimate that we are second largest motor group and I've put a star there next to estimate, I'll come back to that and we are largest by volume, like number of cars we sold, we sold the most cars in the last year and again I'm saying estimate, I'll come back to that, um, the, all the information I'll provide you over here will be in bite sized chunks. The reason I put bite sized chunks here is um, I've got a daughter and she's quite interested in Scratch and when she started learning, you guys can imagine I got very excited. I started telling her, oh this, this and that and that and she was like, she did a dad joke on me and she just said, oh you can only tell me in bite sized chunks and that was just after me telling him what bits and bites are. So that was quite good. Um, down to estimate, estimate. Basically, that's what we do, especially in a multi-dimensional world. We feed the multi-dimensional databases with what has happened, how much sales we have done, and then we try to create forecast, we try to create budgets, and we try to uh, estimate what is going to happen so that we can accordingly um, align our sales, marketing, and every other department. Okay? Um, all the multi-dimensional databases. They work on a technology called online analytical processing and the key feature of that is that all the data that you've got stored, it stays in the memory. So if somebody was to switch off the server, you've literally lost the data that was sitting and feeding the reports. So what you have is the, the, the data copies on the disk. When you turn it up in the morning or whenever it's turned up, it loads all the data in the memory. The benefit we get out of that is that when we run the reports, the heavy data sets, we get the results really, really fast. Um, it, is, it uses the multi-dimensional database concept. It, it's usually multi-user um, in client-server uh, environment and for mostly used for enterprise data analysis. And uh, the key to all of this is, given that you're storing everything in the memory, that you load very little amount of data uh, and the kind of data that you're going to be using a lot. So the key is we load summary and we just report on that. And um, which means most of the reports that are done on there are feeding people from the top of the company. So CEO and everybody from the top and so anything that's operational, we don't do any of the multi-dimensional stuff. MDBs or multi-dimensional databases, so they are, instead of tables, they are built with dimensions. So I'll come to that in a second. Uh, and the key feature we get is that all the data, like I said, that's sitting in the memory, it can pre-calculate all the data for you, okay? Um, and again, we can, when we, dis when we design our um, dimensions, we can create subsets of data as well. For example, for our lookers group, we not only want to report how many cars we have sold, we also want to separately report how many Audis we have sold. And we also want to uh, separately report that how many Northeast cars we have sold. So there's a, quite a few different ways of slicing the data that we can achieve using this technology, okay? Um, it also supports some formulas, custom calculation, Excel sheets, which are favorite for accountants. They love them. Um, and um, again, we can create a view that's good for the CEO, and we can, uh, using the same data and report, create a view that's good for a branch manager. Okay. Um, 
prime example of multidimensional database would be SQL Server um, analysis services. Uh, I'll jump into a bit of um, what dimensions are for the cube. So over here, if you if you look at this, this is a, your typical data table. So you've got the location, date, and let's say measure, and then you've got a value. And in there, let's see, we've got OD Newcastle, uh, for example, in 2018, they've sold like 40 units of a certain model. And then all of those are just in your relational tables. When we try to convert into multidimensional, the first thing we do is we change every single column to a dimension in, uh, apart from the value. Okay. So, for example, location becomes one of our dimensions that we're going to work with, and this is a simple dimension. It just has, as an example, four um, four locations that we've got in Northeast and Scotland. What what it does help us with is all these elements that can be grouped together within the dimension, uh, and and the benefit of that, like I said before, was that all this data. What we do is we'll just feed the data over here. Everything on this side gets pre-calculated, so we don't have to do any number crunching for the big sets of data. They all get calculated automatically. Now the clever part is how how detailed you can design your dimension. So if you can split your 200 dealerships in in certain ways that that can satisfy every single manager or or um, or brand manager or every department in the company then you've done the job once you're loading the data once and then feeding all the report uh, needs this is kind of example of how it will it does work out so if you've got three sites there and you've grouped them into northeast this figure is never loaded it's automatically calculated same with Audi Scotland this figure is never calculated it's automatically uh, never stored, it's automatically cal calculated. Using those dimensions that I've talked about, location we talked about, so three location, for example, I've picked here, I've stolen a Rubik's Cube and uh, filled some numbers in there, uh, for an example. Um, another dimension we saw in the table before was date. So let's assume we've got 2017, 2018, and 2019 on the one side of the cube. And my locations are here, and the third thing that I'm, the measure that, or the report that I'm generating, it's got GBP, how much money we have made against how many units, and this is sort of like an example of per unit price. So if you look at this data structure, if we want to look at OD Sunderland, if we come on this number, it's showing me this is the number for 2019, against GBP. And if I move forward in that dimension, I can see that this is the number of units that we sold and this is per unit value. So the number of dimension we actually use in the real world, that can't be put on any paper because we use, um, we use about nine dimensions but with so many elements that they are about millions and millions of combination. But what it does allow us is that without, without um, allocating storage for those, it's got space to fill in numbers where we want to fill in. And it's, it's got the capacity to then calculate based on that. Okay. In terms of languages, like we know, most of us would know that uh, with relational databases, we use SQL. Uh, in multi-dimensional databases, we use something called MDX. Um, it kind of looks like normal SQL, but if you look over here, when we are selecting, we select against columns and rows, so that we can create the create the report the way that we want, and it can go further than this two-dimensional data. Um, the bigger challenge comes what front end you will use. Um, one of the most common front end that people use these days is Power BI for this. Uh, but it's 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 very new in terms of uh, it's got uh, in terms of feature set, so it's still evolving at the moment. Um, and we we use various different products on the front end for our purposes. Okay. The other method for it is XML for analysis, 
or OLED B driver. So you can get those, but every others have got their limitation. So OLED B, you'll, you won't be able to query as much as you can do in MDX. Um, the cube data structure, I'm just going to summarize what we've uh, seen before. Uh, we usually load the data after taking our, an RDB, flattening the whole structure into a single table, turning everything into a dimension and storing the value. It doesn't work well if you are going to take your, all your transactions and try to store them because that's not what the cubes are for. However, what, you, what we do uh, and what is recommended is you, you store the summary you store the summary that executive levels are keen to look at. They don't want to know how, man, how much money we made in that sale on the mat, but they do want to know how much money we made for mats, for selling mats across the country or across the whole months. Uh, so, which is why we just load, we total up the summary, we collect the data, we clean the data, we build a summary and then we load that, okay? So transactions, we just leave it in the RDB for other reports. Um, and again, um, key thing to keep in mind is that all the data that you're loading in the cube, it's going to go in the memory. So you got to be very clever about how much data you want to load in the memory that you want to report on. Okay. Uh, I've got a quick diagram uh, that shows how we do the data flow in lookers. Uh, we've got about 15 different ERP running in, in the lookers group wide. And I mean, uh, primarily because in most of the cases, whenever Looker has, Lookers has grown, they've bought a set of dealerships. So whenever they buy a new dealership, there's an already system in place. Like recently we bought Jennings, uh, who's got, uh, they've got about eight or nine sites that we've bought from them, and they've already got a system in place, and there's a, a half a million contract that's already there. So we're not in a hurry to change it. Instead, what we try to do is we get the data try to transform it, try to clean it, and load it in the cube, okay? Sorry about the, these lines, they are jumbled up, but once the data in the cube, once the data is in the cube, we use the, the business intelligence front end to report those, um, those figures and give users a quick select slicing and dicing method that they can uh, change the report. And again, the cubes work very well. The, now the problem comes at that point is, if somebody has, if somebody has reported that oh, oh we've made three million by selling Audis, now I want to see which cars are those, how much, what what cars were included in all those three million. Uh, so that's where our front end reporting Laravel comes in. So what we've done is we've built a Laravel front front end that jumps directly to the SQL Server and it's working on the same database that we loaded the cube on. So the benefit we get is that we've got a single version of truth and we don't worry about, oh, that uh, the BI department is saying we've sold 3 million and here the reporting department is saying, oh, we've sold 2.8 million. So there's no two different reports. Here's a snapshot of what our front end looks like. And as I was uh, telling before, it, it kind of pays off if you've done your dimensions properly. If you look here, we've got two Newcastle sites and they are consolidated into Newcastle, which is part of Tynanweir, which is part of England and then uh, Northeast and then you've got England, mainland. And this is one, one of the consolidation we've got geography. We've also got split by marketing directors, split by franchise directors, split by this and all of that. What it does is when people go in, they get specific portion of this dimension that they want to report on. And for them, they think, oh, the report is made custom for me that I can see all my different divisions. But for us, we've only loaded data once and it dimensions pre-calculate all of that data and just help us in that, okay? For the rest of the other items, we just provide that as a quick slice and dice mechanism to them that they can enable themselves, change it themselves what this report then does is go into the cube area in the memory, fetches the data that's sitting there. So if you remember the Rubik's Cube, if the first row was March, if I change it to April, it's going to pick up the second slice and get the data from there. 
and it just happens in, in a less than two seconds. Okay. Um, now, as I was saying, once you go into this report and you've got a list of, oh, we've made this much money, we do need to try and uh, give people ability to drill through it. So, this is our Laravel front end. And I've, uh, I've picked an example from our Belfast Ferrari. Um, I, I had to remove the valuations over here because it was showing how much money we are making on this car, which I don't want to tell you guys right now. Um, but don't worry, it's not massive. It's a two or three percent, not big. Um, but the but the front end works really cleverly because for any any uh, reporting tool that we use for the people in the management we pay a license fee um, it, it could be power bi it could be um, info bi or any other tool we pay a license fee and we and people sitting on the top of the company they can afford that however uh, when we built the whole system we wanted a solution that we don't have to pay like that license fee for every single person so we've got about 10000 employees so which is why we've gone ahead with Laravel on the front end, but use the same data. And it, it kind of um, works in showing that the same data can be used in two ways. If you've summarized it properly, you can load it in the cube. And if you've left it flattened in a, in a better structure, you can then run a web front end with that. Okay. Um, a bit different thing that I've done from what most of people who have done work in Laravel uh, is that I've, we've built it on a Windows server. And that's because um, Lucas is a primarily Windows platform company. So for me to get approval of, oh, I want to build in Laravel, that was the only way. Uh, so it's running on IAS, and it, the benefit is it gives Windows authentication out of the box, so we don't have to worry about those 10,000 users. As long as you've got an AD account, it works, and you can query any car on the system. Okay, and we've got plans to take it in, into Azure um, and um, to see how well it runs over there. And like I said before, it's querying data from the same SQL Server in the backend. And um, lastly, uh, for for the Laravel app, I must mention that we we need some more work on that. So if anybody is looking for a job. Laura is the key person to uh, talk with. Um, I thought at the end I'll just show you a random picture. I'm not sure if it's clear, but this is one of our branches where some mechanical work has been done. And I didn't knew this that for that mechanical work they have to lift the whole chassis of the of the Land Rover up to work on anything. No wonder it's very expensive. So yeah. Uh, and thank you for listening. Any questions? Sorry? Is there any way to use the, is it the cube that you can show it the cube uh, of the more dimensional yeah. within PHP? Or is that yes, they, they have been attempts to do, um, there's a class called um, PHP OLAP that gives, you, um, that gives you ability to query on the cube. But like I said, if you jump away from MDX, you get a bit limited uh, view of what data you can pull out, uh, but they are things available. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the beauty of it. Once you group it, that's the that's the legwork done. Once it loads the data, the the technology across the board, be it Microsoft, or be it IBM, or any IBM Cognos, or any any one of those. When you're loading the data, it just keeps a pointer to the same place and calculates at the time of load, which could happen at 6 a.m. in the morning. Users won't notice. So we've loaded all the data at 6 a.m. in the morning, and that's done, and it's pre-calculated for all the million combinations and ready to report. Thank you very much. <coughs>